when you finish drafting, then the revision it follows. During the revision step, you may revise at least four times, five times. For any article, it may be 10 times, 20, 30 times. Okay? What do you do when you revise the manuscript? You check the paragraph structure, you check the outline by reading only the first sentences. Okay? And now you move on to the language. You got to pay attention to the language now. Language is important. First, there are different elements in the sentence. There are words, phrases, and clauses. Clauses are short sentences. Okay? You get the idea by reading the clauses, but you cannot get the full picture by only reading the words and the phrases. Any sentence follows subject, verb, and object pattern, unless it's a command. In technical writing, you almost never use command. So it must have subject, verb, and object. That's the list, that's the minimum you have to have. A voice, we have different voices, right? We have present, past, and the future tenses. Of course, at the end of the day, you need to write with clarity, conciseness, and grammatically correct. Okay, plural or singular. The reading is oh, no doubt, no brainer. Okay, this is a very easy. Just consider this as a warm up. Okay, Pay attention to the temperatures of the samples. So that is, this should be easier for you. All right, it's circular the right one. Third one. One out of the 10 tracks interview the rest area. Okay, that subject is one, then you've got to use is. Although there are drivers, take a one out of a 10. Okay. Should I use some have or some has? That depends on some of what? Depend on this guy. Because it is a sum of carbon dioxide. So it is has. Most of Similar to some, this is the sum, this is the most. Most of something depend on what the most of is. So if it's the most of drivers, so you use do. Last one, a large portion of journal articles in this field, portion is singular, so it's just like that. By these examples, I was trying to show you the grammatical agreements. Agreement in person, agreement in number, and gender. The subject and the verb agreement, okay? Which means the verb must agree with the subject, okay? Do not get distracted by the object. Serious, a singular, okay? There is a serious, but serious is still singular, okay? Or more, now, some, depends on the context, what out of what, okay? It can be either singular or plural. Relative, relative pronouns say that which depends on what they are taking from, so there is a context. Okay. Not all words any with S are plurals, analysis. Sometimes there's an abstract nouns, which means there is no single, it's a group. It's a group like a physics, like a ethics, mathematics, all those things, okay? Appear to be plural, but actually they are singular. Okay, now let's use these tools one more time. The topic of this report is, okay, topic, nanomaterial, okay. In this case, remember you always follow subject. Continue at least three numbers is needed. This one is a little bit more challenging if the answer is is. Three numbers is needed. Okay, pay attention here because we're going to use this kind of writing a lot in your technical writing, right? You're going to use it. Why three numbers is? Because three numbers always come together in this context. It's the one thing. A pair of scissors, okay, you have a pair, but that pair is not 
two. Okay. This one, the answer is is peanut butter and the jelly is my favorite. You have peanut butter, you have a jelly. How come there is? Okay, now this is a cultural thing. Because every morning these Americans, if they have a piece of bread, then they start to smearing butter and jelly together. Peanut butter and jelly always go together in their breakfast. It becomes one thing. It's a cultural thing now. Two and three equals five. Okay. This is another example. You also use a singular. When you express measurement, weight, mass, and the numbers, or something like that, you need to use a singular verb. Mass. A pair of scissors was, but scissors were. Both are correct. The title of any long document is a singular form. This is the title. This is the title. So it cannot be R, it must be is. This is the title. Coupons are joined by conjunction like add maybe all okay so you will see the follow two rules when there is have each and every become a singular i'm going to give examples it's much easier when you have severity and so you cannot use has anymore so this is a wrong okay when you have something add it become have it's most of the time and it goes with the plural when you have table is a singular, right? That's a singular. In this case, it depends on the one after all. All figure. Then it's a support. Okay. The next, all table one, then it's a support. Okay. Anyway, uh, either one is uh, this one. These are the correct ones. This to avoid the some problem like this, if you're international students, you simply write them in two sentences. Gender inclusivity, he, him, his, she, her, and it. Before, it wasn't a big challenge. Now, with the global movement for gender equality, this will affect your writing. Okay? You must write with inclusivity, for example, Without sacrificing clarity, you can use this kind of words. First individual each, rather than the nouns, you don't have to mention the gender. Or if you have to mention gender, but you're not sure, you can say he or she. He or she introduced the speaker to the audience. Every author has provided his or her email address. You can take the following two approaches to solve this problem. One, you can use plurals, antecedents, like they, their, or theirs. You change it. Or you write the sentence to remove those with a name, for, with a, a noun. Now you use plurals, their email addresses. Oh, you do not say he or she, you say the moderator introduced the speaker to the audience. Avoid gender related bias. That's another reminder. Say the nurse is not necessarily female. If engineer, definitely is not only male. Okay. Independent or dependent clause. Okay, example. The landfill site in Waterloo region is in the city of Waterloo. It is used by the cities, Cambridge, Houses, and Waterloo, which means they are equally important. But you also can show by subordination that which is in this one. Okay, so that's basically tells you you could remove this one a modifier is very important to highlight the emphasis. It can be a word, phrase, or clause. You do not need a modifier. Remember, you don't need a modifier for grammatically correct sentence. But without a modifier, you lose clarity. There are many modifiers in technical writing. This is an unmodified sentence. The size is increased with the potential. 
is grammatically correct, you have subject, verb, object. But it's not clear, it should be nanofiber sizes increase with the potential at this. Prepositional phrase can act as a modifier. That's what I just showed you. You should write an article following the ethical guideline, ethics guideline. This is a prepositional. Restrictive and non-restrictive modifiers. You can remove the non-restrictive modifiers, but you cannot really remove the restrictive because they're going to change the meaning. Show you the example here, which was. So there is a comma in between. Enclose this phrase. You can remove it. It does not affect the meaning of the sentence. It only makes sense of the clarity. Which that which is used for non-restrictive. It introduces non-restrictive. That is used with for restrictive. Process. Keep that in mind. This may be different from what you learned in high school. So to avoid those con confusion, use that for restrictive and which for non-restrictive. Do not mix. Because other readers, even in the British you readers, cannot understand you. Okay, for example, the battery separator, which is located and a barrier that so i'm going to move on to the sentence structure sentence structure types so there are simple sentences like a summary is here i'm writing the book uh compound sentences which means there's for example there is another element with a comma but remember there is a comma here not a period so this is only one sentence okay you only have a full sentence is one period. Okay. The size of this, there is a semicolon. Again, this is a one sentence because you only have one period. Okay, this is a compound sentence. There are more complex sentences, we call it the complex. Then you have this pronounce, say one with a modifier, all those are independence or all all those things, okay, dependencies. These are more complex, but sometimes you may have a compound and a complex. For example, there is a semicolon and a pronoun. But for you, you need to realize that there are different structures. That's it. Okay. When you write, try to mix them rather than use all the simple sentences or very complex compound complex sentences. You're going to lose yourself if you keep writing with the one style. Both long and short sentences are needed. If the same style becomes tedious and monotonous, that's why I do not suggest you, you usually vary sentence style to create effective contrast and emphasis. The parallel structure, actually, we also have a list. Have a list. You can also consider that as a parallel structure in paragraph. But here we are talking about only the parallel structure in the sentence within the sentence. Okay, so most likely you have A, B, and C. Okay, so that's a parallel structure because A, B, C. Okay. However, when you have this kind of a parallel structure, A, B, C should have the same uh, uh, property or characteristics. Sometimes you also have all, okay, so all the other things. Okay, C, E, O, E. Okay. If there are phrases, there should also be parallel by phrases. Anyway, so that's what we meant by parallel. But in reality, a lot of parallel structures are not parallel. Okay. So we're going to start with some good examples, followed by some bad examples so uh, you can compare. Okay. The first one is parallel by words. Showing on the screen here is either DNA or RNA. Another one showed on the second sentence, have a sulfur dioxide, volatile organic compounds, 
ozone and the particular matter. There is a word and here. Okay, there is a this is if I use a word. If, if it is a parallel by phrases, parallel by clauses, like either we work together to fight the pandemic or we let the pandemic lead us all. We have a we, we work, let together okay, and they to fight. Okay, then you have let the pandemic to be classes by classes. Another structure we all see this like not only but also this is a little bit challenging. I see a lot of uh, errors when I revise students' works. If you have a math, there should be another word here to parallel. Have, include, okay, a list of objectives. Here is a list of deliverable. Expected that, that, and that. So that introduces a clause. I'm going to ask you, are these a parallel structure or not? This research is interesting and a challenge because you have a adjective and a noun. So they are not a parallel to each other. Okay, by this kind of uh, analysis, you can tell if this one is a sophisticated air quality monitor, monitor may be used for this sentence. So they are detect these air pollutants. So this is wrong. You remove that word because it destroys the, the, the parallelness. For this sentence, nothing wrong with the meaning or the grammar, but it's not the parallel structure. However, I do see this very often in students' work. The reason is this is objective. This becomes a noun. Number four, in typical scholarly writing, the authors are expected that they would start with the background information, that they would elaborate on the methodology, and that results would be presented to the readers. I would say you have no problem understanding what the authors want to tell you, but when you read a writing, it's a non parallel stuff. They would do something that's active voice. Okay. They would elaborate as active. Later on, it changed the be presented. It become passive. You can fix it by the consistent voice. Okay. So they would start, they would start, they would elaborate, and they would. This is more like a list. Okay, a small list, but it's writing in sentences, right? You have three, like if this is the list, they one, two, and three, right? So when you have a list, all the entries in the same list should have the same structure okay, and property. Sentences can also be joined by something called the conjunctions. A conjunction connects words, phrases, and clauses in a sentence to explain the relationship. Okay. The relationship between these elements, there are four types of conjunctions. So these are all parallel structures by two elements. If it's a correlative, either all, both and, neither, nor, or they should be in pairs. They must have the same grammatical for voice, passive, or, or even tense, right? Or should be uh, the same. These are all correlative conjunctions coming out of the, uh, the parallel structure now. Another topic, so the main idea precedes the second one, or the secondary idea follow the main idea. Begin your writing with the most important one. Although cobalt, Based solvents are effective in absorbing nitric oxides, they create secondary pollution. The first half is the main idea. 
So this main idea shows you that they are effective in absorbing something. But if you flip their position, you start to say creates secondary environmental pollution, then your emphasis should be the pollution. So okay, you, when you write, okay, you're gonna focus on environmental pollution from now on. The, the elements introduced by although becomes a secondary. Let's look at two more examples. They use them because. Because of something, the results contain artifacts. Before you present the facts, you talk about the reasons. It sounds like you are providing excuses. Okay, so there must be some liability, all those things. You say, because of what? Okay, you are not talking about the facts. I mean, technical writing, we do not do that. So you can provide facts by saying the results contain artifacts. That's the main idea. And then you have a because followed by the reason. So then you catch the attention of the readers. Oh, the results contain artifacts. So when you keep writing using the same style, even the parallel or subcoordinates, it sounds like a monotone. So you need to change the sentence structure. So you can write interesting sentences with the modifiers, but on the other hand, try not to overuse it because it becomes more like a show off of your trace. Okay. There are several techniques to achieve Variety. You can vary sentence lines, inverting word order, and the modifier. Remember that. You can connect short independent clauses by, by subordination. You can also combine short sentences into a long one by converting verbs into adjectives. The monotone one, the distillation column is 20 meters tall and its diameter is four meters, and its surface roughness is five micrometers. I have seen many like this, because most of my graduate students are international students. Most international students write like this. It become a list. This list is written horizontally rather than list vertically. That's the difference. So it's not a sentence. Okay, although it appears like a sentence. So to revise it, you can use subordination using the pronouns to introduce some parameters. Okay. So the distillation column, which is 20 meter tall and four meter in diameter, has a surface roughness of five micrometers. But when you read the second sentence, then this one becomes less important. Remember when we introduce which is, it is dependent. So it becomes non-restrictive and dependent. So then your revision changes the importance. Then you may wonder, okay, am I doing this right? Okay. You cannot just revise the sentence because they are monotonous. Conciseness, clarity is the most important. So when you revise, you change their relative importance. Then you also want to change, check that because the ideas is more important than its appearance, right? We are going back to the ideas now idea development you got to make sure your revision of a language does not impair the ideas okay i can give you the answer for this revision it is actually better okay it's actually better because when surface roughness is more important we are dealing with the fluid mechanics resistance to the the flow or the caused by the friction is the surface roughness dependent so by this revision we enhanced language and the ideas. So this is a very, very well revised sentence. You also can change their order, the order of the words in the sentence to achieve uh, emphasis, details, and the pace. For example, a photo of a black hole has never been so clear. Uh, nothing wrong with it, but if you want to emphasize something then you can use a reverse order okay. never has the photo of black hole been so clear so the first normal one is talking about the photo of black hole the second one emphasize only first one in the whole world 
you also can invert inserting elements. Okay, so both top and the bottom providing details, and those commas slows down the reading. Emphasis, you can achieve emphasis by alternating position. You can use a repetition, repeating the same thing. You can use an intensifier. Intensifier is not a modifier. Intensifier means just intensify that word. You also can change sentence length, change the sentence type using special fonts okay, or special typeface, okay, like italics, bold, underlining, and the capital, okay, but occasionally. Let's see how we achieve emphasis by position. You begin with the idea you wish to emphasize. So try to write in the order of importance. Another one is called inverted sentence. Uncomplex sentences are preferred in technical writing for the presentation of complex ideas. So you are emphasize the value of simple sentences. However, if you write this way, if you take this in technical writing, you move it to the beginning of the sentence, then you are emphasizing technical writing, which means in technical writing, you want to do this. But if it's like you're writing a novel, a drama, a, a play script or something like that, it may be different. You also can achieve emphasis by positioning the elements. That's what I said in the same sentence. Okay, we already saw that inside the film hood. The space is filled with materials and supplies. Definitely, this is not what you want to emphasize. It's less often to emphasize a film hood. You want to say the space is filled with something, right? You can say the space inside the film hood is filled with materials and supplies. So this way, you want to emphasize our space is taken. Okay. In order to establish something, this is written by my master student. Her thesis is about models. So it should emphasize on multiple linear models were developed. Also, I want to emphasize, I want to show you that you use to, do not use in order to. Uh, unless the sentence is a very uh, short, you want to control the pace. This is a long enough sentence. You don't want to make it longer. If the process can be improved, so the field would provide many benefits for society. This is written by a Canadian student. If then most students think that it's not about native or non-native English speaking anymore. If, which means there is a condition, sometimes very demanding. And the main idea is about energy. So then you can say solar field, you emphasize on solar energy. Another factor affecting the clarity of writing is point of view. So you just move it, bring it to the front. Another technique is by changing the sentence length. We something all leads to something. So these are the two long sentences. Suddenly you say more research is needed. That's very unusual way to write. However, if you do that occasionally, you catch people's eyes. Repetition, repeat a word, sentence, or paragraph to emphasize idea. This is a poor repetition. Recent reports concur our conclusion in this paper. These studies confirm that it is feasible. Their analysis, however, are primarily they are not the exact words or the terminology. Report means the card copy somebody is reading or some electronic copy on the screen you are reading. That's the more like your thesis, your article. You write, this is the writing or publication. Study is the research itself or work itself, right? Study 
includes a lot more, say, methodology, literature review, data analysis. Okay, yeah. Analysis is only part of study, right? Report is a final deliverable. So they are not repeating. How to revise? You can say recent studies, these studies, and theirs, they mean the same. Very powerful technique is intensifier, like a very rather all those. However, they are not encouraged in technical writing. When you give a very provoking talk, a speech to the public, you want to emphasize on your, your, your idea. You want to emphasize the idea you're trying to make, then you use intensify. But in technical writing, actually it's opposite. We try to stay calm, neutral, and professional. We don't want to use intensifies a lot. However, that doesn't mean it's forbidden, okay? You can use occasionally to make your point. On the other hand, words like uh, perfect, impossible, final, those words usually do not appear because you never have anything perfect. Nothing is impossible. Our results agree very well. Usually these are the vague, okay? vague words because the well is a subjective. So you can give numbers, so less than 5%, right? Typical sentence thoughts, rumbling sentence, and fragment sentence, illogical overuse of modifiers, garbled sentence, garbled sentences present all ideas in the equal importance. Avoid loading your sentence with multiple thoughts. So they are more like a related, right? Because if you have a, no importance difference, and you cannot distinguish the importance, then there, there are multiple thoughts. The company was founded in 2019. Only three members were on the staff and all members took multiple positions and roles, but it was not an effective operation. When you read this one, you would think, okay, that's what I want to emphasize, right? Because it appears first. One, then you tell the time, then you can say only three members, then you use however, change. Rumbling sentence keep going on and on. You've got to begin with one main idea. If you read this one, you will feel like you need to take a deep breath at the very beginning in order to finish this sentence. You remember that it is here, it's one sentence. In the CSTR, four dispersion patterns, parentheses, and then can be observed it's like a rambling, go on and on without a stop. I break it into one, two, three. So there's the one, it becomes three sentences. So this way, using the period, you have a pause. Okay? There are four dispersion patterns, flooding, cavity formation, complete dispersion of gas, and recirculation of gas mixture in ACSTR, then you can stop. A minimum impeller speed is needed for a complete dispersion of gas phase. Then you can pause. A lower speed leads to incomplete gas dispersion at the lower part of the reactor. Okay. That revision helps reduce rumbling, you could further improve the revision by transition work. Fragmented, which means the sentence is not a full sentence. These are grammatical errors. You could miss verbs. That's not your intention. But when the sentence becomes very complex, somehow it's missed. This is very difficult to tell with all these examples. Sometimes you miss the subjects. Okay, this is the fragment. Why? Because cause what? Is it the carbon dioxide concentration to rise or something else? So it's the temperature, right? You miss the ocean temperature. Why? Because maybe before this sentence, you were talking about ocean temperature. Then you carry on and on, you skip it. Sentence fragments often result from the use of relative nouns, pronouns, like whom, which, that, or those, or sub one subordinating, like although, because, or for example, sometimes you write and forgot, for example, the biological approach 
comes with some benefits, for instance, contributes to environmental sustainability. Okay. It contributes. A logical assertion is another mistake. The probe length is 20 centimeter long. So it's a length and the long. Okay, they have the same function. It's called a duplicated function. You can revise it very easily. The probe is a 20 centimeter long. You really do not say the probe length is 20 centimeters. Although grammatically it's correct. But modifier, we mentioned this several times already. I'm going to quickly go through this emotional. Try not to use emotional writing because when you become emotional, you become illogical, right? So that's the opposite. Emotional is the opposite logic. So that's why you don't want to use it. Just use data, support your argument. Avoid the emotional writing, say surprisingly, the definitely, we definitely certain, obviously. This also by a lot of native writers because you don't use this all and there's absolutely. Emotional writing, you can see a lot of uh, intensifiers, the words, significant difference, the best agreement, and the critical and the subtle impact. Don't have any data to support your idea. You said something, but there's no data to support it. Sometimes you may place the modifier to the wrong place. That's called a misplaced one. You place it immediately before or after. Okay, one example. This uh, correct writing. He almost lost all the data collected last night. That means he almost lost them. However, he didn't lose any. He didn't lose any. Remember that. So that's the almost modifies the word lost. He lost almost all the data collected last night, which means he lost some data, maybe most of the data. However, still there are some data sets. We send the samples to the lab that we are satisfied with. Either one could happen in reality because you want to have analysis, but you don't want to send to any lab because some are doing the lousy job. Right? However, when you control the samples, if the sample is not what you want, you don't send it out. Either way, it may be right. Decided immediately to start. Okay, now this is a challenge. Immediately, are you trying to modify this one or this one? So which one are you trying to modify? That's cause a confusion. You can say that so this way to modify that or immediately start. Okay, start. Either way is clear, you see. This only improves the clarity, it becomes clear. Doesn't mean the last one is grammatically wrong. Grammatically is okay because there is a two in between, right? Dangling modifier has nothing to modify. Although it sounds like you're trying to modify something, dangling modifier also confuses the reader, but for a different reason. Okay. For example, while working on the lab report, the computer suddenly shut down. When you say working on, then that by grammar, which means the computer is working on. That's the grammatical rule. However, Computer cannot be working. Computer is only a tool when someone is working. You need to add. Okay. When I was working on lab report, the computer suddenly. The figure becomes more readable after replacing the symbols with descriptive words. I believe you you may have written something like this, or you have read something like this. It sounds like it's correct, right? It's a very uh, uh, understandable, but grammatically it is a dangling modifier because after replacing, when you have after replacing, which means it is the figure replaced something. However, this is wrong because the figure cannot replace itself. Right? You replace or after you replace. 